Um, yeah, what I'm going to talk about here initially is a bit of a journey of where the technology has come from because the innovation that we have is about taking existing technology and implementing it into other areas. So the cattle is one extreme and so taking it from an uh, elite sport uh, to the cattle industry is the whole spectrum and hopefully by the end of this brief story you'll be able to join some dots and see whether there may be applications in your area. So just tying it to Charles Darwin, there is a process of um, evolution that's been gone on with the technology and like what I said I will talk about um, how, it's, how it's progressed and specifically to areas that I've, I've been associated with and what my colleagues have been associated with. The technology, the, the images there that you can see on the bottom left is the many applications that we've, we've applied it to um, and that's obviously in a sporting context. But going right back, the wearable technology commenced in about 1995 and for about 10 years people attempted to measure with the technology speed and distance and kept on falling over, kept on failing. That's because the technology is essentially accelerometers and, gy uh, and, and gyroscopes and so forth and it was difficult to get that type of output from them. And then my colleague, who was also one of my PhD supervisors, um, Dr Danny James, he thought, why are we doing this? Why don't we use the technology with, in the context of what it can, or what it does directly measure, which is acceleration and angular movement and so forth. And once that, that concept was taken on board, people started having considerable success. You can see there on the bottom uh, an image that was, uh, well, from 2006 to 2010, essentially my PhD period, uh, that's what I looked at, a whole heap of squiggly lines. And um, it takes quite a bit to understand what that's saying. That data there is from rowing. Um, you can see that there's, there's, there's clear patterns in the data, in, especially in the blue lines in the centre there. Um, but what does it mean? And so it takes a lot of analysis. So that was one part that took a long time for us to analyse, but then we started moving on from that. And then we started developing uh, the technology, and hopefully I'll be able to stop this. No, yes, I stopped it too late. But anyway, I uh, know oh it's going to go on a loop. But there's um, the, you can see there that we fuse the technology of, of video with the inertial sensor data and that gives us a far more dynamic type of output. So that was one of the um, areas that we went through. Along with that is the visualisation and taking different ways of, of getting, instead of a whole heap of squiggly lines, more easily understandable and uh, uh, in a, a, a faster context. Uh, so what I'm showing you here that's pretty much old school now. We've, we've come a long way uh, to the point that now we're moving on to 3D feedback. And again, I don't know whether I'm going to get this going here. Um, oh, it's going. But the little scroll bar that I was hoping it was going to come up with is not coming up for me. But essentially, anyway, you can see the uh, athlete there just walking around. Up on the top left-hand corner is the 3D visualisation. So this was done, uh, developed by um, our research group, um, that, or the research group that I was associated with. This is primarily done by uh, uh, Tomohito Wada from Japan, hence the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the video there of what it is. And so as the person moves, that sensor is placed on their lower back and it's, it's showing the movement of the person as, as they are carrying out their activities. It doesn't give a displacement or a distance measure or anything else like that. It's just showing what's happening. That will be the development that comes in the future. So that's all the background of where we've, we've, we've been and where it's come to at this point in time. So moving forward, so what's happening now is just the trends within the technology market. And we'll use on the left hand side there uh, as an example, and that's just Bluetooth. 
there's demand for Bluetooth and there's applications that's been developed for Bluetooth and they are work, um, it's, it's, it's going forward hand in hand and you can see there the, the, the depiction of the increase in, in the requirements of the technology and its use that's running with it. On the, on the right here you can see some, and it's not a very good um, uh, uh, image there, but just to take a couple of areas just to show you as an example of the growth in, in technology in the wearable technology type of market is uh, the top the left is um, uh, cloud-based, the cloud industry, and it was worth in 2012 approximately oh, a, hundred, a bit over $100 billion. It's now worth, or oh, in uh, 2016, that was worth $206 billion. So it's, uh, in four years it's grown that much. Below that, big data, and Julie had spoken about big data and the use relative to, um, to um, uh, the the, the food industry and so forth, but overall, this is in the US alone as well, $5.4 billion dollars, um, in 2012, $48 billion dollars last year. So huge growth, and that's the potential of what it is. And bring it back to what the wearables are, what you were carrying around uh, in 2012, for example, by next year, you'll have eight times that type of technology that you're carrying around with you. Now, some of that technology will be embedded into, the, the, into a single device. Others you might be wearing as a wristband or something in your pocket or whatever. It could be um, uh, just stuff that you can carry around with you. It's certainly the way of the future. So, what are we going to do? So we're going to take the trends that are seen in technology, in research, in markets. They provide us opportunities to provide services to communities. And so where we've already um, delivered um, into the, the areas in, that, that we've delivered into is health, into rehabilitation, into home environments, into the workplace and we're now moving into cattle and cattle monitoring. And essentially we're, we're involved with the iMove CRC and, and part of what we are going to be involved with those is the monitoring of cattle during transportation. So that means that we can monitor, cap, monitor the cattle for their welfare uh, and for keeping condition up. We can monitor them for their movement, heart rate, body temperature and so forth. So if there is the uh, animals being stressed, it's time to get them off the, off the, the vehicle to, um, to let them uh, recover, not get overstressed and then uh, lose condition. The technology can be wireless, it obviously gives information back to the driver and then come out of the, off the truck as well to third parties that may have an interest in it. Going back one step to the workplace, we're well developed in using this technology for workplace <coughs> assessment for being able to monitor safe lifting practices uh, for monitoring people during fatigue. What we do, and so this technology, like what I said, it's been developed up for elite athletes. We don't become a different being when we go to the gym, to what we are at home, to what we are in the workplace. It's only different applications with how we apply ourselves to those activities. So again, all we're doing here with this technology is applying it to different scenarios. So there's huge opportunities there of just, well, not reinventing the wheel, but just taking the wheel and putting it into a different shape. So thank you for your time.